Hi, my name is Marcus. This is the second video in my tutorial series on using lit element. In this video, we're going to build on the previous step where we just built a simple component and turn this into a full-blown to-do application. The functionality that we want to add is a way for us to add tasks, mark tasks as complete. We can sort by active or completed tasks and we can clear completed tasks from our to-do list. So that's our uh, aim with this video. We're going to continue off where we left, left off in the last video. So if you didn't do the previous part, you can download the source code from that step and use that as a starting point. The link will be below. So in the view component of our application, we'll first define the model of our application and then we'll get to the actual UI building. First off, I'll define the filters that we had for different visibility options. This is just going to be an object with keys and the display values associated with them. The second thing we want to do is define the properties on our lit element object. We do this with a static getter. So we get properties. Here we return an object that contains the properties of our element. The properties that we have will be an array of to-do objects. We'll call this to-dos, and we will declare this type as an array. Then we will have a currently applied filter. Here the type will be string. And finally we'll have the task which the user is inputting. Again, the type will be string. Now that we've defined the properties, uh, we can go ahead and create a constructor where we can initialize the state. In the constructor, it's important for us to remember to call super before we do anything else to make sure that uh, lit element itself has time to set itself up. Then we'll just initialize our property values to something so this of to do's equals an empty array. The filter will initialize to showing all. So visibility filters dot show all. And then for the task, we'll just initialize that to an empty string. The way lit element works is that whenever we change any of these properties, this render method will run on the template again, so it will update update the values that we have in our UI. Before we start building out the template, we're going to install a few UI components from the Vaadin component library. You can find the whole list of components and copy-paste the npm install instructions from the text version of this tutorial. All right, so now that we've installed them through npm, we want to go and import them to make sure that they're available for us to use. So we'll just import those uh, components here, and now we're ready to use them. First thing I want to start with is the input layout. So that's where the user inputs the task and hits the button to add the to-do. So for that, we're creating a new div. We'll give it a class name of input layout. In this div, we will create a button text field and a button button. For the text field, we'll configure a couple of attributes here. So the first one I want to set is the placeholder, so people know what to put in here. It'll just be task, it's a descriptive name. Second thing we want to do is we want to bind the task property to the value. So this way, if we change the task, it will get reflected in the UI. The way we do that is by using just a normal JavaScript template string syntax. So we'll have a dollar sign curly brackets, and in there we'll bind to this dot task. Finally, we'll bind uh, the change 
event that this text field triggers to a listener that we'll define a little bit later. We listen for events by first prefixing the event name with an at, and then we give the event name. So in this case, we're listening to the change event, and we'll bind that to this dot update task. We'll implement that in just a sec. First, though, we'll add uh, configure the button here. I will give this a theme attribute of primary. That will make it stand out a little bit more. Just signal to the user that this is a the primary action on our page. And then again, we'll listen for an event, in this case, the click event. And we'll bind that to this dot uh, add to do. OK. So now that we have the template for our input layout, we'll go ahead and here underneath the render function, go ahead and implement these two methods that we have. So first, uh, we'll do update task. Update task will take in the event object. And what we want to do is just update the task property on our class. So this.task equals event.target.value. So we just get the value from the event target, which is our text field here. OK. The second thing I want to add here is the add to do functionality. Add to do essentially needs to do two things. First, it needs to check if we have a task. And if it does, it should add that to the array of to do's. So we'll first of all check if this.task is a truthy value. If it is, then we'll update the to do's array to a new array that contains all the to-dos in our previous to-dos array and a new to-do object, which will have a task of this.task and a complete property that defaults to false. So you can notice here I'm not just adding a new to-do to this array. Instead, I'm always creating a new array uh, and changing, uh, assigning that to the property. This is because uh, the lit element change detection will only notice if you change the actual properties. It won't look at changes within arrays or objects. This is also going to make it easier for us to move our state into Redux later on because that also uses immutable data structures. So we've updated our to-dos. The next thing that we can do is call this the task and set that to an empty string. That way, the text field should get cleared out whenever, uh, whenever we add the to-do. So let's go into our browser and see if this works so far. OK, kind of works. We forgot to put the caption for our button. So let's update that real quick. Add the to-do, save it again. Go back here. OK, UI looks OK. So we'll just write in something here. Hit Add to Do. The task got cleared. And presumably, our to do got added to the array. We can actually check that by going into our dev tools. And looking at the elements here, we can select our to do view. And if you hit Escape here, you can open up the console underneath and type in dollar sign $0 to get, the, get a handle to the to-do view, and then you can inspect the to-dos array on it. And what we can see is that we have an array with one element with the right task and the complete property on it. So that worked. One final kind of convenience thing that we could do here is add a shortcut listener so that we could just hit enter instead of, uh, instead of clicking the button. So Let's go ahead and do that. Here on the, on the div itself, I'll add another listener again with the at sign. And in this case, I'll listen for the key up event. And we'll bind this to a new method called key, uh, keyboard listener. Or let's call it shortcut listener. And again, we'll go underneath the render function here and implement this. So shortcut listener. This takes in the event. And we want to see if 
the event dot key is equal to enter. If it is, we'll trigger this dot add to do. Save that again, go back into our UI, try it out, hit the enter. We can see it got cleared again, so we know that it works. Okay, so we have the first part of our UI complete. We're able to add new to-dos uh, in our application. The next logical part that we want to do is display these, uh, these to-dos. So we'll go back into our render function here. Underneath the input layout div, we'll create a new div here. We'll call it, uh, give it a class name of to-dos list. So div class to-dos list. In here, we'll essentially map over the to-dos and for each to-do, we'll produce a new uh, lit HTML template describing how that to-do should look. So this dot to-dos dot map. So for each to-do, we'll return an HTML template tag. And in here, we'll create a new div class to do item. And in here, we'll create a VOD and checkbox. For the checkbox, we want to, again, configure a couple of attributes here. The first one is a Boolean attribute. We can set those with a question mark prefix. So this means that depending on the Boolean that we pass in, it will either add the attribute or remove the attribute. In this case, we want to set the checked attribute. And we want to set that depending on the to do dot complete property. We then want to listen for the change event on the checkbox so that we can update our model accordingly. So here we'll have a little inline uh, listener and call this dot update to do status. We'll pass in the to do and then we'll pass in whether or not the checkbox got checked. So e dot target dot checked. All right. And then I will go inside the button checkbox tag here and put in the to do dot task. So that's the that's the task that we had. Let's go in into our browser, test that it works. Hit add to do, and we can see that it shows up here. The next part we want to do is implement this update to do status. So we'll go again down here below our render function, create a new method, uh, update to do status. This takes in the updated to do and the complete property. And again, the same way that we added to do's by creating a new array containing the new to do, what we're going to do here is create a new array that contains this change. So we'll ca call this dot to do's equals this dot to do's dot map. And what I'll do here, semicolon there, I will check if the updated updated to do is equal to the to do that we're mapping on. If it is, what I want to do is return a new object with all the properties of updated to do, but we're overriding the complete uh, property on it. If this wasn't the to do, then we'll just return the to do itself so that we don't modify it. Okay. Let's go into our browser, see if this works. Add a couple of these. One, two. We'll update this one. We'll go into our dev tools again. We'll uh, make this a little bit smaller. Go into our to do view and again select the to do's property here. So we can see we have a have an array of two tasks, one and two, and we can see that the complete property was updated on those. 
Okay, we're making good progress. The next part that we want to accomplish is the filtering of to-dos. For that, we're going to add the radio uh, button group underneath here. Again, we'll go into the render function into the template definition. And under this div, we'll create a new button radio group. Like that. And inside here, we're going to map over the properties or the values of the visibility filters object that we had up here. So we, we want to loop over all of these and add options for those. So we'll go in here. We can get the values with object.values. We'll pass in the visibility filters and we'll map on those filters. And again, for each filter, we will return a new template that will contain the, the option for this filter. So for this, we'll use a button radio, radio button. And here, we'll pass in the value of the filter and we set the value property equal to that same filter, like so. OK, uh, in order for this button uh, radio group to work, we again need to define a couple of things on it, like where it gets its value from and what to do when the value changes. First, I'll give it a class name, though. We can call this uh, visibility filters, then we'll find the value to this dot filter, and then we'll listen for a value changed event on it, and we will find this to a method that we're going to create called this dot filter changed. We can go and go underneath here and create the filter change method. And this takes in the event. And what we want to do here is simply update the filter property. So this dot filter equals event dot target dot value. Okay. So that's going to update the filter, but just updating the filter property is not going to, to filter the to-dos yet. For that, we will uh, need a, a filter method that would actually do this. So we'll uh, here I just added a little bit of pre-baked code to save us some time. But essentially, what we're doing is we're switching over the current filter value and then depending on whether or not we want to see the active or completed to-dos, we call filter on the to-dos array. And then the way we use this in our code is that instead of mapping directly over this dot to-dos, we'll call this dot apply filter on the array of to-dos so that it gets filtered whenever uh, the, the filter changes. Okay, so we'll go and try this out. Let's see what's going on here. Refresh here. Looks like I have a typo. Objectives, values, all right. Sorry about that. Okay, so we can see we have the options here. Again, we'll add a couple of these. One, two, select one. Try to filter only the active ones only the completed ones, and all. So that works. So whenever we change the filter here, the filter property changes, and that will cause the render function to re-render the template, which will then apply the filter. The last piece of functionality is adding a button for clearing all the uh, completed to-dos. So we'll add a button, button, clear completed. 
in here. We want to listen for the click event. So again, at for uh, listening for events. And the event name is click. We'll build bind this to this dot clear completed. We go in and implement this. So this sorry clear completed. Again, we want to produce a new array containing only the applicable to do. So in this case, we this dot to do's equal to this dot to do's dot filter, and we want to get all the to do's where they're not complete yet. So so we filter every every to do that's not complete. That will produce a new array and we'll assign that to the to-dos property. Let's try that out. One, two, three. Select two of these, hit clear completed, and it works. All right, very good. One last thing we wanna do in this video is apply some styles to our application. So we'll go into our render function here into the template and we'll We'll create a style tag here. Now by default, lit element uses something called a shadow DOM, which will essentially encapsulate the inner workings of our components from the rest of the document. And likewise, any outside CSS will not apply to our component. So just to kind of show you how this works, I will internally here add a style for an H1 tag. Let's set the color to red. And let's do this like important to make sure that this applies. We'll create a h1 tag in here. Hello. Save and go into our browser. You can see that we have a red hello here, but the main applications uh, h1 tag did not get applied. So we can see that we're kind of shielding the top level document from, from these changes. Now the Shadow DOM is a super helpful tool when you're building reusable leaf type components. However, when we're building an application like we are right now, I usually recommend that we turn off the Shadow DOM. That way it's going to be easier for us to create uh, styles uh, that apply to every view in our application without resorting to some workarounds. The way we can turn off this uh, functionality is by overriding the create root uh, method. Uh, sorry, create render root method and have it return this. So we're returning this HTML element instead of the shadow root. So if we go into our app now, you can see that this style actually leaked through and styled the main application. Of course, this is not what we want to do. So we'll uh, clean this up a little bit move these and add add some styling that I had from previously. So here I'm scoping my styles with just the, the tag name of our component, make sure that they don't interfere with anything else. Go into the app, you can see that everything's spaced out a little bit nicer. We have a larger task field here, but everything should still work just the same. Three like that. All right, very good. So that's the second video in our series. In the next video, we will take all of the state management logic that we currently have in our to-do view, and we're gonna extract that into a central Redux store. So we're gonna see how we can use Redux together with lit element and be, build this uh, nice state management into our application. So be sure to check that out. Thanks.